Hello there folks, this is Ferenci on board here, welcome again to my channel, a place where I discuss different topics like spirituality, deeper introspection, dream interpretation, or, well, whatever the audience might feel like asking, and, well, finally speaking, up till now I didn't get too many questions. So, I usually come up with a video when I feel nudges from the universe that a certain topic may be required, and... What I can say is, the topic of this video was uh, a question that I hear somewhat frequently in society, and it's a question that I've studied a bit, and the question is, do you want to be my girlfriend or do you want to be my boyfriend, okay? So many people nowadays might ask this question, you know, might ask other people this question, but the point is, uh, I thought to myself, Okay, if someone would ask me that, my only logical answer would be no. Now, why this would be no is because, well, being more introspective, I would definitely dive into the meaning of the question and take each and every word and break it down. Okay, so some of the words might not have much of an importance, like, for example, do. Okay, and others might actually be of great importance for me, okay? So, for example, you is a specific targeter, so I'm specifically target, so why me out of the whole crowd, okay? Either I'm a target or I'm, like, specifically sympathized, which this is my priority to find out. And, well, after that comes a big problematic word called want, okay? Then... Um, I, I found a, what I call a stance specifier, okay, which is to be, okay, and then I have found a, another big problematic word, namely my, okay, every time you present my, there is a great attachment, okay, so it's, the question already up till here means that are you willing to cede your willpower to me, okay, because when you ask someone to be uh, yours, okay, irrespective of whatever, your helper, your boyfriend, whatever, your girlfriend, uh, you're already implying that you want them to be uh, yours, okay? And you're just asking them for their permission. It's kind of a narcissistic question in a way, because when you say my, you're already turning that into an object, okay? Now, first of all, the point is... Um, well, let's actually finish the question. So, then we have girlfriend or boyfriend, okay? Now, this word has kind of gotten out of control in a way, because um, if you say uh, friend, uh, English doesn't have gender, so if you have friends, uh, people may most likely understand a male friend. If you say girlfriends, everyone understands instantly that they are, you know, uh, more like of a so-called lover, okay? This is kind of a dummy thing, out of my point, because, well, why not? It is kind of a dummy thing, okay? I mean, what's the difference if you say girlfriend or lover, okay? In the end, boyfriends and girlfriends, nowadays, most of the relationships, if not, I would say, 90% of them, are just not a relationship, more like situationships or simply codependencies, as I call them. And codependencies are not a relation, okay, like, they're just how to be alone with another person around you, and, you know, you're just constantly lying yourself that you need something from that person, and that person is lying themselves that they need something from you, and there's always a kind of a bargain, you know, I give you some energy, you give me something, and, well, that's kind of it, and most likely I both the persons, or if there are more, each of them is kind of lying themselves that, hey, you know what, uh, maybe another day that person will. If you start things in your life with maybe, then definitely they won't happen, okay? It's one of the most brilliant ways of lying to yourself, but, well, sometimes it may work, but if something would work in 1% of the situations, maybe you would want to find something that would work in more than just 1%. So... Why would the logical answer be no, is because no, I don't want to be other person's properties, okay? 
someone who really loves you and you also love them back they don't even need to ask that question because well it is something that you feel okay people who ask this question mainly are beings who uh, are interested in the so-called aspect of you know social status okay because they're interested in the status okay now the status is nowadays highly represented by this point of um, social media you know there are so many of those people who like all their life is basically an open book and you know they found a boyfriend oh they everyone on their Facebook knows they're in, they're in a relationship and you know they've been to somewhere everyone knows or should know and this and that it's like I'd rather be a shadow okay it's not important for me uh, whether people know what I've been doing or whether people uh, don't know some people say it's much better to simply you know uh, drown them in your silence and then you know like smack them in the face with uh, uh, with your results so the point is you as a first question uh, as a first important word of the question okay that shows that I'm a specific target okay if I'm a specific target what does that person specifically wants then from me and why me out of everyone else because this is highly important why me compared to other people might mean that to their mind I am either the best uh, you know of the offers more or less I'm either something to be tried irrespective of being the best or not so most likely they don't have a preconceived uh, opinion or I don't know they have other reasons right they might actually feel something specifically for me so in the first option, it would be something like, well, um, if I'm a specific target, uh, maybe they have felt some kind of weakness within me. Usually narcissistic people kind of instantly feel weaknesses within others because narcissistic people at a mental level, at this three-dimensional consciousness level, whatever people want to call it, they function on the simple premise, okay? Uh, they're simply interested in exploiting any of your weaknesses on a spiritual level people may say that they are actually teachers who would teach you how to become better but sure of course it may take a long time to realize that you're just being buffooned around and it's always your fault and you're gonna go on what my games that I'm working on call a journey through consciousness okay because you'll definitely see a lot of corners of madness all of them coming from you and there are nothing else than that uh, signs that are telling you hey get get away from here but society never teaches us how to uh, you know understand our own emotions and how to understand our own situations because something happens within you and you don't feel good because you're in a, in a shit situation that's the only reason so I might be you know from a certain group if you are selected by someone who you know would like you to be their boyfriend or girlfriend you might be you know the biggest sucker okay you never know if that person is narcissistic or not because narcissists rarely open themselves up from the beginning but they kind of always have the same type of uh, you know uh, uh, pattern which to me apparently gets a bit old they always seem to be more than perfect and overly charming i have several videos in which i present indirectly why uh, narcissists are uh, extremely charming and well i said my own point of view but most likely psychiatrists and probably psychologists won't agree because well why would they and the reason is because they are basically authentic okay a narcissist is what they are okay call them liars call them whatever you want they are basically that okay they are the original ones okay why am i saying this is because cheating lying deceit and the such is what they know is the only thing they can do in the meantime we the other ones you know we who are not the so-called socially disturbed right with the people who don't have uh, you know social disorders let's say something like that well in that case you know we have this huge tendency to lie and deceive ourselves okay and it's the purpose of the narcissist to tell us that hey 
we are just fooling ourselves, okay? The moment we believe we will have a beautiful relationship with them, they are actually teaching us what lying is. And the purpose of the narcissist is also to help you realize what things, um, what things are actually like. Because, well, you can't, you can't outlie a narcissist, okay? That is their natural aspect. That is who and what they are. That is, well, that is who they are, specifically. We are lying ourselves, we are always finding excuses and the such, but those are just, you know, pathetic ways, in a way, to simply, you know, ditch a certain chance or uh, keep embracing our comfort zone. So, that could be a point. If I would be the best, okay, out of a certain amount of choices, well, this could be also a bit narcissistic. Now, narcissistic, I'm not saying a full-fledged narcissist, okay, and this is just a possibility. Because the moment when you feel that someone is the best, okay, there is no such thing as the best. But when you feel someone or something is the best, that comes from an egotistical viewpoint, okay? How can you say someone is the best by just looking at their physical shape, okay? So many people feel that, oh my god, that guy is the best just because they have the best pecs. But again, the best comes from a subjective manner. Okay, from our subjective point, from our intellect, and our intellect is nothing else than the accumulation of mind data that we have. You know, we have acquired from learning from others, hearing from others, believing from others, right? And a belief is nothing else than a accepting something without a necessity for proof, right? So, yeah, that could be a point, because you don't know me, you don't know anyone, you don't know that person, but they're definitely the best, okay? It sounds a bit silly, because it sounds actually very silly, because it's the same thing as uh, with creation. We don't know how to uh, define creation in its entirety and complexity, okay? But we definitely know there's a white bearded fucker up there who doesn't have anything else than do Big Brother with us, okay? So, ah, and it's also male, and it's also uh, somewhat old, okay? Hmm, interesting. So, yeah, that's a point. When you say that something is the best without knowing anything about that person, okay? That is definitely a belief, as I said, accepting something without a necessity for proof. So, basically, you're fooling yourself. Most likely you're inviting yourself to, you know, what I call the prelude to disaster, because when you believe someone is perfect, irrespective of what flaws they might have, and especially when hormones are all around, well, in many of the situations people kind of end up with, uh, you know, disappointments and the such. So this specifically targeting, okay, people kind of always overlook this, okay. And you, as a word, is also associated with a persona, okay? Now, I don't uh, like, nor accept the way, in a way, the fact of, you know, being considered a persona. Because a persona is nothing else than a person, okay? A mask that you put on your face so that you embody a certain behavior, okay? People kind of nowadays forget to pull out the mask, unfortunately, the, however, the point is, anything that one would want to manifest, okay, there needs to be a certain ego, there needs to be a certain persona, right, when you speak to a certain person, you need a specific persona, right, that's how society works, that's how the mind works, that's how we work, when you want to speak on a stage, depending on what you want to speak, you need a certain ego, right, you need a certain person, when you want to do this, okay, I don't know, think of something, you need a certain ego, right, for every possible action we have, there is a certain ego, a specific ego we might need. Now, okay, to move even further, the point is, mm, should I actually go even further, like, um, yeah, so when people present me as a persona, okay, they only are p pinpointing a bit of me, okay. Because when you play with personas, especially when you forget to detach from them, okay? Because personas in your mind should be nothing else than a state machine, like in video games, or the gear shifting at the car, okay? When you shift into a gear, only that gear is active, the other ones are simply inactive. 
just like in a video game. Your character can be moving, your character can be running, your character can be idle. These are just states in a state machine. Any one of them being active instantly means the other ones are inactive. Okay, So the other ones in activity means this one is active. Okay, When all others okay, are inactive, this one automatically triggers. Okay, There is no other way. If you have six stances, for each, for each stance, in order to be triggered, the other five must first of all be offline, okay, or, you know, locked, or not triggered, whatever you want to call. And when people see you do a certain thing, and, well, apparently they fall in love just for having seen you do that specific thing, well, there is a little problem, because they only saw a ego, okay, of yours, a little persona, okay, a bit, a fraction of yourself, okay. Now, we are also, in so many ways, not knowledgeable that, you know, um, well, let's actually present from my standpoint, because I know for a very long time, and even up till now, uh, I know I'm nothing else than a collector of personalities, okay. I know that I might laugh with someone else's laughter, and I might have I don't know, someone else's grimace, or someone else's frown, because I was very young when I realized that I basically have nothing, and kind of technically I am nothing, and it took me years to actually realize that when you are nothing, you've actually beaten the game, that's it, game over, right? You've beat the game, you're actually the best, because when you are nothing, you haven't identified yourself with anything, so basically you are not corrupted, okay? Which basically... Uh, education systems kind of do. They kind of corrupt you to teach you to uh, become indulged in so many illusions, okay? Nationality, race, you know, all these ideas that so many people take pride in, right? And that's infecting yourself with certain things that don't serve you anything. So, the point is, as I said, this you is a very intricate word, okay? It's a very heavy weight word that people just use without much knowledge. Usually I break things down to the minutest of details, I might go even further, but I don't want to make an hour long uh, video. So, yes, okay, you. Uh, then comes, well, do you want, okay? Now want, again, is another uh, problematic word, because wanting, okay, now wanting means unconsciousness, okay? When you want something, this is something unconscious, okay? In rare situations, you can be conscious and want something, okay? But in most situations, wanting is an impulse. When people function by impulses, they are in almost all situations, and if not in all situations, they are simply... they are simply unconscious, because you cannot have conscious impulses, okay? An impulse means something within you is not yet... Uh, fulfilled, is not yet finished, uh, something within you is not uh, healed, okay, and it will try to be healed, it will try to, you know, to signal you to heal it, or it may want to free itself, because any idea that hasn't been fulfilled will always keep trying to become one with creation, which means allowing it to simply dissipate, which means no longer letting it um, which means no longer uh, let it manifest in your unconscious or your subconscious mind, okay? So, it's kind of tricky, but people have to understand that when these impulses trigger, you just have to let them flow out, okay? You just have to let them go out, because basically there's always some kind of an attachment. Now, that attachment means there's an entity or multiple entities that are simply feeding off of your pains, because, well, most of the thoughts that people think of, they end up being some kind of powerful thought forms, because people induce a lot of emotion and a lot of mental bandwidth in literally anything. If someone says something stupid, people will overly react, and overreaction means that you're basically spending some energy and you're creating a thought form. The more you think of that, like most people do, and especially when they gossip, Okay, when they gossip, they're actually like virus spreaders, okay? They're 
spreading their misfortune and the such to the others and you know like that's how mind viruses as I call them that's how they spread so the point about this uh, want okay is as many say it's also a uh, manifestation blocker because when you say want want comes from a manifestation of lack okay when you say want you acknowledge that you don't have it okay but you place the accent on the lack instead so you're basically signaling the universe that you don't actually require that okay you just impulsively want it the universe gives people only that which they consciously want that is why many people who want things they don't receive that because you have to be conscious to build a certain thought form that allows the manifestation to come in and flow into your existence because you know just face it in a brutally honest way how many things did you want in life and how well are you now that you didn't even get it right because think about it how many times did you want to die and well something good happened afterwards if you were dead you wouldn't have had the chance to experience that beautiful thing okay so more gratitude in life and a more humble approach to life definitely won't ever hurt now also want implies a certain ego because it's an action and any action requires a specific ego okay and i'm not interested in egos that are you know um, marks of unconsciousness okay because so many people are unconscious and you know many people say ignorance is bliss but i usually shut their mouth with a question whose ignorance okay yours okay but who's bliss definitely not yours okay because ignorant people can't be blissful okay blissfulness is the opposite of ignorance because blissfulness comes from consciousness you can only be blissful when you know the moment and when you can feel the moment some when they meditate some when they you know just sit in nature and i don't know just listen to the birds singing watching everything like hearing the grass grow whatever okay or just feeling the wind or i don't know doing something that you really like and of course as long as you're not doing it as an impulse so again this want is a problematic word i'm not going to dive too deep into it as well so well yes now the next word would be uh, oh yes the stance inducer the stance representative actually which is to be now to be this is well a bit tricky to understand because to be um, I don't want to be someone else's state okay because if I am someone else's state okay because they say uh, afterwards comes the word my okay so to be my the point is I don't want to be others okay I just want to be my own okay I am my own design I am my own creep well I am my own creation actually because even if my parents gave birth to me basically I am my own creation at the same time okay we are all our own creations because our bodies develop okay and everything changes every 24 hours no one is the same person because each and every hour new cells are born other cells are dying okay so therefore if you go at a cellular level you will see that each and every hour you're a completely well not a completely different person but you're a very different body okay and it is also a creation of the self in a way because once you are born from the genetic aspects of your parents okay then you're constantly evolving now of course everyone is boasting nowadays with i have grown up my children but that doesn't imply anything that's just a narcissistic way of claiming you as their own possession because they haven't grown you up you have grown up by yourself they haven't dictated your cells when and how to reproduce that's the intelligence of your body your parents most likely gave you some shelter and they gave you some food which of course you should be grateful for i'm not saying to deny these aspects but uh, you simply grew up on your own accord okay the body knows what to do it just needs the food and the shelter to do what it needs okay now that's a point so this uh, to be okay this to be is very tricky because most people are just doings not beings okay because people who manifest um, impulses okay namely want which is an impulse okay those people are doings not beings because you can't be unconscious okay you are unconscious okay you can only be conscious okay because when you are conscious you are simply being in a state of flow okay 
when you are in a state of unconsciousness okay you are a doing because when you are unconscious okay your unconscious mind takes full control over yourself and well that's the fate of so many of the sleepwalking people right bots whatever you want to call them they just act on you know instincts and well they allow circumstances to guide their own life and well they function also on impulses the first thing that pops into their mind that's what they most likely will be doing this is not a good way to live because well that's nothing else than living like animals because that's what animals are they are living unconsciously to a certain extent because well that's how they are the difference in between animals and humans is that humans can do everything from a conscious way but many people fool themselves with this illusion of you know chasing happiness and when you chase happiness there is a little problem because when you chase happiness uh, well we have a little problem when you chase happiness and you realize and you don't know that happiness actually lies within when you chase it outside you're basically allowing impulses and urges to take care of yourself right and when they take control of you you're basically inexistent you're basically dead because if you're not conscious you're kind of dead in a certain way so this to be is kind of um, it's not necessarily correct from a certain standpoint okay from a certain mechanic of the inner okay because if you want something you're definitely not gonna be it okay if you want something and you want to be some to be that okay you're gonna work consciously towards that instead of just waiting okay because when people ask you do you want to be my boyfriend or girlfriend they're waiting on your answer okay which most likely they have been waiting for a long time until they probably plucked up the courage and at the same time they might actually have expectations okay and expectations are also a sign of unconsciousness because expectations if I see as I see them they're nothing else than a prelude to disappointment okay or to disaster emotional disaster if you want to call it so but this is nothing else than a prelude to disaster why I'm saying this is well it's very simple because well it's a prelude to disaster when you have expectations in people in situations and the such you can't control anything of that so definitely you will be sooner or later disappointed okay when you have expectations out of something you know there are still slight chances that you may be disappointed but again not having expectations and working towards something it's the best way to be because you're fully conscious of what you are doing okay so yeah okay and well there's also the last word called my and my again as i've been saying it just shows possession which tends to be a bit narcissistic in a way the uh, person wants to have a certain hold of you they want to have a certain control over you but well i don't feel like it okay i don't want to be someone's property because well if someone loves me and i also love them back okay that's you know it's double love okay if there is little to no attachment because there will always be some sort of attachment there is no such thing as unconditional love many people fool themselves with that but there will always be conditions there is always going to be at least one condition it's just that people are sim simple minded enough to miss them or they simply don't think that far away i mean the first condition to love you is if you're alive okay because most likely you will love someone who is alive you can love you can still love someone who is dead but it doesn't serve you any reason okay it doesn't serve you anything because when a person leaves the body they no longer know who and what you were for them all the titles all the aspects of the mind are simply vanished okay are simply vanished because they remain in the physical body when that etheric body leaves okay it loses the uh, you know the mind that it had in the physical body okay its discernment as well is also lost it might have its own discernment okay but that doesn't serve in this world in order to experience a certain dimension you simply need a specific compatible body okay to experience that dimension other than that you'll most likely be just like a discarnate okay discarnate beings they're probably everywhere but well they don't know what things are in this life because well they don't have a physical body they might become parasitic in a way and 
that means uh, the people who allow them in okay they are basically allowing those to feel at least a bit what it's like to be in this dimension okay but let's not dive into that so yeah that's kind of it this kind of wraps up the video I presented my point of views on this question and why it should be taken with great care because people don't know the subterfuges of words okay so all these being said take care of yourselves you are loved and appreciated whatever you are doing is the best you can at the right pace for you take care um, have fun enjoy life become more introspective to see that everything you are looking for is more or less within you and well until next time Ferenjan board signing out <laughs>